Everyone has worn a hat at least once in their lives. Whether it was a hat to keep them warm in the winter season or a hat to keep the sun out of their eyes while working or enjoying time outdoors. Back in history, hats were created as a means of protection. However, throughout time, hats became a necessary piece of statement fashion, religion, culture, and status. Specific headpieces were worn for specific reasons, whether it be a king wearing a crown to state his power and royalty, a Jewish kid wearing a kippah for religious purposes, or an old man enjoying a game of baseball. Hats are worn everywhere. These days, while they are still used for protection against the weather and as a symbol for job, status, and culture, tons of people wear them for fashion purposes and bringing their overall outfit together. Hats come in an array of different shapes, sizes, and materials, and today I'm gonna be teaching you how to make five different crochet hats and how to do their different variations. Like I said before, there are many, many, many different types of hats. There's beanies, conicals, fedoras, top hats, cat in the hats, the Turkish fez, turban, bonnets, balaclavas, the montera, bowler hat, straw hats, cowboy hat, newsboy, baseball, snapback, bucket hat, the beret. Giant steak, birthday cake, large rice, chocolate shake! The list goes on, but unfortunately I can't make all of them due to cultural and religion appropriation reasons and to the fact that I don't know how to make a lot of hats yet and simply due to the fact that I want to get this video out as soon as possible. So maybe I'll do a part two once I learn how to do more different types of hats. So just comment down below if you're interested in a part two after finishing this video. In this video, we'll be learning how to make the following. The beret or the tam, a cat beanie, a regular beanie, and a magic circle beanie, and the balaclava. There are so many variations on how all of these can be done. So without further ado, let's jump into it. For the hats in this video, you'll need one to two skeins of yarn of your choice, a crochet hook, I use 5mm, measuring tape, a darning needle, some stitch markers, and a pair of scissors. The first thing you need to do before you can even start making any hats is to take your head measurements. You'll need your head circumference, which is how wide the hat needs to be to fit around your head. For reference, my head circumference is 21 and a half inches or 55 centimeters. Because yarn stretches, when you're making your hats, you want to make them a couple inches smaller than your actual head size so that it can fit perfectly when you're pulling it onto your head. For reference, I brought down my original measurement, which was 21 and a half inches or 55 centimeters, down to 18 inches or 45 centimeters. This way, when I put the hat on, it will stretch around my head up to 21 inches, which is my original circumference. You'll also want to figure out how long you want the hat to be. This determines if it fits snug on the top of your head or hangs off slightly or a lot. To measure the length that's appropriate for your head, place the start of the measuring tape at the top of your head and measure all the way down to the bottom of your ear. If if you want your hat to be longer to add a thicker brim, add a couple inches to it. If you don't want the hat to go over your ear, subtract an inch. For reference, my hat length measurement is 8 inches or 20 centimeters. For more in-depth information about the sizing and everything, I linked an amazing blog post that I used in my description. Now that you have your measurements, all you have to do is choose what type of material you want your yarn to be as well as the colors you want to use. I go more into depth about this in my cardigan tutorial which I will link below as well as some color palette ideas. Before I begin, I have a quick tutorial for anyone who is just starting to crochet. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, create a chain, create a slip knot, create a magic circle. If you already know how to crochet, you can go ahead and just skip to the next timestamp. P.S. I peeled like six tangerines before filming this, so that's why my nails are kind of orange. Yeah. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is learn how to create a slip knot. A lot of people do it in different ways, but for me, all I do is wrap the yarn around my finger twice. Bring the first loop over the second loop, and then bring the first loop, which was originally the second loop, over the second loop, which was originally the first loop. We're going to pull the same loop all the way off of our finger and then tighten the yarn, which creates this knot that was slipped off, or in other words, the slip knot. You should have a loop that's open right above the knot. 
To create a chain, grab the hook of your choice, I'm using a 55 millimeter hook, and put the hook inside of the loop you just made. Grab both ends of the yarn and pull it until the loop gets smaller around the hook. Take the yarn that's attached to your non-dominant hand and place your thumb and ring finger onto the slip knot. Then take your crochet hook and wrap the hook around the yarn your non-dominant hand is holding from the left. Then pull the yarn and your crochet hook through the small loop next to the slip knot. That creates chain. The chain helps you start your project and it can be as long as you want depending on what you're creating. To do the single crochet, all you have to do is push your hook through the loops that you just created on the chain. To notice the correct loops, it looks like horizontal Vs. You want to put the hook in between those Vs and then wrap the yarn over your hook and pull the hook and your yarn through that loop. You should have two loops on your hook. After that, you're going to wrap the yarn over your hook one more time, which is called yarning over, and then pull it through all the loops on your hook. And that's how you do the single crochet. To do the half double crochet, you'll do the same as the single crochet except you want to make sure that you're yarning over before you insert your hook into the chain. So yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, and then yarn over again and pull your hook and yarn through the chain. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time, pull the yarn through all three loops, and you've created the half double crochet. To do the double crochet, start by yarning over like you did for the half double crochet and then insert your hook into the chain. Yarn over and then pull your hook and yarn through the chain. After that, you're going to yarn over and pull through only the first two loops on the hook. After doing that, you should have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the remaining loops and there you have the double crochet. For the magic circle, there's a lot of variations, but the way I do it is hopefully pretty simple. I first wrap the yarn around my hand, making sure that the end of the yarn is what I'm using to wrap. This makes sure that the end of the yarn can ensure that the circle will close when I pull it, basically. What you're gonna do is turn your hand over to show the back of your hand, and then take your hook and put it under the strand on the right side and over the strand on the left side. Turn your hook and then use it to pull the left side strand under the right side strand. As you pull it under, twist your hook to make a loop on the hook's body. Then take your hook and put it under the strand that's to the left and pull it through the loop that's on the hook. Most of the time for me, the loop is a bit too tight for me to just pull it through. So what I do is I take my hand out gently out of the circle and then use it to pull the loop open a bit for the hook to put the yarn through. A lot of the time, the yarn that's attached to the ball is going to be in the circle that was created, but that's perfectly fine. I've seen some people cross the yarn before um, making the magic circle, but I personally haven't done it that way yet, so this method works for me. With the circle, you can crochet the different stitches into the middle. For this example, I'm using a half double crochet. So instead of double crocheting into a chain, I'm double crocheting into the middle of the circle. I'll keep doing that until I crochet the amount I needed, which is usually 6 or 12 times that I need to crochet into the middle. And then after, I'll take the end of the yarn and pull it, which will close up the gap in the middle. After that, I take my hook, go into the first loop on the left side, and then yarn over and pull through. I'll pull through the loop on the left side and the loop on my hook, and then chain two, which enables me to begin my project. The first hat we're going to start with is the regular beanie. So make sure you have all of your materials and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is make a slip knot and chain 46. Remember, this is for my personal head measurement, which is on the right side of the screen. With this information, you can determine how many you need to chain for your head as well as the chart that's in the description box below. After I chain 46, I go ahead and got started with doing my half double crochets in the chain. The entire project is going to be using half double crochet. For me personally, working in the chain is the most annoying part when getting started, but after that, you're good to go and it's fast and easy to me. <laughs> the 
Once you're done with that first row, chain two and flip your work over. For the remainder of the project, you're going to half double crochet into the back loops only. Here is the front loop, which is closest to you in the front, and this is the back loop, which is the farthest from you in the back, behind the front loop. You're going to work into that back loop all the way until you finish the length for the beanie. After you finish that row, you're going to chain two and turn your work over. If you're making a beanie with only one color, you're going to do this for a total of 50 rows or 48 more rows. If you're making a two-tone beanie like the one I'm doing right now, you're going to continue this for a total of 25 rows. You've already done two rows, so you need to do 23 more. For this tutorial, once we finish row 25, we're going to go ahead and join in our second color. So here I finished the last of the 25th row. After I finish the last stitch, instead of chaining two and turning, I'm going to take my second color, put it over my hook like this, and then pull it through the loop, which counts as one chain. From here, I'm going to use that second color and create one more chain and then turn my work over. You're going to continue half double crocheting into the back loop normally, but if you want to weave in the first color so you don't have to do it later, all you have to do is make sure you have the first color in your hand as you do a half double crochet normally, making sure you're intertwining the color within the crocheting. That way, you're securing the first color into the stitches so it won't come out. After doing it a couple of times, you can take your scissors and cut the first color yarn off and then crochet normally. After you've finished with all 50 rows, fold the beanie in half and then slip stitch both ends together. Make sure you keep everything aligned as you slip stitch so it won't be crooked or anything. Once you reach the last slip stitch, go ahead and finish it and then chain one. And after you do that, you're going to want to cut about like a 10 inch or so tail and then pull it through, which will secure your work. And here we're going to go ahead and cinch the circle together, which will create the top of the beanie. All you have to do is go in and out as close to the edge as you can and gradually and gently pull the yarn. I tend to wait until I get to like a halfway point to pull it a little more roughly, but it's up to you when you want to pull it. Once you reach the place where you begun, you can pull the yarn roughly, which will make the hole close up a bit, but be careful and do not pull it super tight or the strand will break. So do it roughly enough that it will close, but not to the point where the yarn will break. It's okay if it doesn't close 100% because you can easily sew the top from one side to the other so that it can be 100% closed. Afterwards, weave in the ends a couple of times, cut off the remaining yarn, and then turn the beanie inside out. Your beanie is now complete.
Within the beanie category, we have the cat beanie. It looked a bit daunting to me, but it was actually pretty easy to do. And so far, I know two ways how to make it. I'm going to show the more difficult way and have a small drawing on how to do the easier version. For the easier version, all you have to do is crochet a beanie like the one earlier in the video, fold it horizontally, and slip stitch it together. Then you slip stitch the top together and then voila, your cat beanie is done. For this version, it's still easy, but a tiny bit more complicated. I'm gonna be using two colors for this tutorial, but you can use as many as you want or just one. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a slip knot and chain 80. For the chain, I just measured it out to my exact head circumference so that it wouldn't be too tight for me. I personally like a looser fit for my hats, so that's what I'm gonna do but if you do want to make it smaller, that's 100% up to you. After creating the chain, you're going to want to join it in the round. What I personally do is make sure the right side of the hat is on the outside and then the wrong side is in the inside. To know which is which, look for the horizontal Vs that are in the chain. On the back of the chain, there's these little knots, which I claim that it's the wrong side of the chain. Then I'll push the hook inside the first loop in the chain and then slip stitch both together. To know which is which, look for the horizontal Vs that are on the chain. That's where you're going to want to insert your hook and make sure that that side is on the outer part when you turn it into a circle. I'll then push the hook inside the first loop in the chain and then slip stitch both sides together which makes sort of a circle. For the first row you can do two things. You could either continue with that first color you made the chain with or go ahead and bring in a new color. I'm going to bring in a new color. To do this all you have to do is take the second color, loop it on the hook, create a chain of two with the new color and then you're all set. I'll be using a double crochet for the entire cat beanie. What you're gonna do with the new color is double crochet into the first loop closest to the chain. As you double crochet, make sure you're holding onto the old color to weave it into the project as you go. This is very important because you'll need the color for the next row unless you don't mind weaving it in at the end and adding a new color every row. To weave it in as you go, make sure your hook goes under the old color strand as you double crochet normally. You'll do this for the whole project, weaving in the opposite color until you get to the end of the row. Then you'll slip stitch to end the row. Then use the new color for the chain and continue on. You want to do this for a total of 17 rows. On the last row, after weaving in the opposite color in a couple times, you can cut it off and finish the project with a normal double crochet. After you reach the end of the row, slip stitch and chain one. Cut a tail on the yarn and then pull through, making sure it closed tightly. You can then weave that strand in and cut off the access. To create the illusion of cat ears, all you have to do is make sure where you ended the beanie is in the middle and then take a darning needle with the same color yarn as the last row you just completed. Press the beanie together and make sure everything is lined up evenly and then sew back and forth through the loops. Once you reach the end, pull it through like normally and then weave it in. Cut off the excess yarn and then you're done. Turn the beanie inside out, fold the rim, and there you have your cat beanie. Right here, I wanted to show you quickly how I made the ears more pointy. To do that, all you have to do is take some yarn. Preferably, you'll want to do this if the cat beanie is a solid color. Um, when I do it with one that's multiple colors, it doesn't really look that good. But right here, I'm just showing you how to do it. So basically, I personally like using four stitch markers so I can know exactly how I want to make it diagonally. And then what you're going to do is put the darning needle inside and out from the front of the beanie to all the 
the way in the back, making sure it goes out of both ends when you're going back and forth. And then once you reach the top, you're gonna turn over the beanie and do the exact same until you reach the point where you first started. And then what you're gonna do is just pull the yarn and that kind of cinches in the hat, making the ears more pointy. There's another way to make a beanie. For this one, you can make it as long as you want, but you definitely need to know how to make a magic circle for it. So make sure you use the tutorial that I did earlier in the video. For this beanie, first make a magic circle. I'm gonna be using double crochet for the entire project, but you can use any stitch you want. Just make sure to remember that if you're using half double or single, you'll most likely have to do more rows than you would for double crochet since they're a lot smaller. With my magic circle done, I'm gonna double crochet 12 stitches into the middle of the circle. Once that is complete, take the end of the yarn and pull it, which will make the circle close in the middle. You can pull it a couple times so that it gets smaller, but don't pull it so tightly that it'll break the yarn. After it closes, put the hook into the first loop you see and then slip stitch it to the previous loop, which will create the actual circle. chain two and then you're ready to officially begin the beanie. So obviously the circle is a bit too small for your head so to make it bigger you're going to have to do increases into the loops. The first row was a 12 double crochet into the circle so this is your second row. For the second row you're going to put two double crochets into each loop. This is called increasing. Increasing will make the project grow in size which is what will need to happen to create a hat big enough for the top of our heads. So for this entire row increase into every loop until you reach the end of the row. Here you'll see a small loop that you can crochet into. Some people tend to skip over it, but I personally feel weird about skipping it, so I personally just add an increase into it as well, so the hat won't have any unnecessary gaps in it. After increasing into the tiny gap thingy, slip stitch into the loop that's after the chain of the second row. If you look closely right here, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Hopefully this makes sense, but you'll put your hook right under here and then slip stitch it to complete the row. Then chain two and then continue on. For this row, we'll be increasing in every second loop. So what I mean is for the first loop, you'll double crochet only one time into it and then in the second loop, you'll crochet twice. You'll repeat this pattern over and over until you get to the end of the row. So again, do one double crochet into the first loop and then on the second loop, do an increase with two double crochets.
Once you reach the end of the row, you'll continue this pattern that I drew out here. So just to explain it a little better, for the fourth row, you'll do double crochet normally for two loops, and then on the third loop, make an increase with two double crochets. You'll follow this pattern over and over until you get to the end of the row, and then you slip stitch and chain two, then you move on to the fifth row, in which you'll increase on the fourth loop in the row. Hopefully that makes sense, but if you have any questions, just let me know. If you ever forget where you had put your previous increase, you can easily look at the previous rows and even on the row that you're on currently. The increase that you put in to a loop feels kind of a bit thicker than the loops with only one double crochet. If you look closely here, you can see that there's two pillars, I call them, in this loop and the one next to it has only one pillar. Once you see that pillar, you can tell where you did the increase. Once you finish crocheting into every 15th loop, finish that row with a slip stitch and then chain two. For this part of the project, there'll be no more increases and the length of the project is entirely up to you. I personally will do double crochet for 10 rows and then end the project, but you can make it as long as you'd like. But for this, make sure to remember that you're not increasing anymore. No more increases. Once you reach the end, slip stitch, chain one, and then cut the yarn. Pull that yarn through the chain one until it closes, and then weave in the extra yarn, and you're done. Learning how to make a beret might have been my ultimate favorite about this hat collection project due to it being just super cute and flattering to me and the creative possibilities for it are literally endless. To make a beret, you'll first have to make a magic circle. Once you make the magic circle, you'll double crochet 12 stitches into the middle and then pull the end yarn gently, making the circle close up. Don't pull it super tight or it'll break. Once it's closed, slip stitch into the closest loop to the left and then chain two. And now you're ready to begin the beret. For the beret to work, you'll have to do some rows of increases, rows of no increases, and then rows of decreases. For my specific beret, you'll first want to put an increase of two double crochets into every loop you see until the end of the row. If you want, you can add a stitch marker where you made your chain to remember when the row ends. Once you reach the end of the row, slip stitch into this little loop here, and then chain two. For the next row, row three, you're gonna increase into the second loop for the entire row. For context, first do a normal double crochet into the first loop, then for the second loop, put an increase of two double crochets. Do this for the entire row until you reach the end, and then slip stitch that row closed. Here's a little drawing diagram that shows all the increases you have to do for the beret. Hopefully this is straightforward enough to be able to understand it. You'll want to increase until the hat is a good size for the top of your head. You can make it as wide as you want depending on what you personally look for in a beret because later on the decreases that you're going to make makes it actually stay on top of your head. So you can literally make it a gigantic hat and I think that's the coolest part of making a beret. Once you finish your increases, you're going to double crochet into every loop without any increases for two rows. These rows should be row 12 and 13 if you're following this tutorial exactly. After those two rows, you're going to do a couple rows of decreases. 
Increasing makes a hat grow bigger. Decreasing makes it grow smaller. For this row, you're going to do double crochet normally until you reach loop 9. On loop 9, yarn over like you'll do for a normal double crochet and put the hook into loop 9. Yarn over again and pull through the loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Instead of finishing a double crochet, what you're going to do is put the hook into loop 10 and then yarn over and pull through. Now you should have four loops on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through three loops, making two loops left on your hook. Yarn over again and then pull through all the loops. And that's how you decrease. So for every ninth loop, you'll decrease until you reach the end of the row. Then slip stitch and chain two. Here's another drawing diagram thingy explaining the decreases you have to do. So you can go ahead and pause here to get the decreases done. After you finish decreasing, this is where your creativity can be brought out even more. Here is where you can either create a ribbing or change up how you want the base of the beret to be. You can add that little stem thingy to the top of the beret, or you can add cute little ribbing detail, or make it like, you can make whatever you want, honestly. For me personally, if I'm making a basic beret like I am in this video, I just single crochet with no increases or decreases for four rows. After that, I'll slip stitch one row at the end of the project. This fits my head the best due to my head being sensitive to any pressure or tightness, which will in turn give me a headache. So I like my hats to be a bit more loose, if that makes sense. Doing the beret this way makes it very lightweight and loose, yet fits perfectly enough so it won't fall off. After those few rows, I slip stitch and chain one, then cut the yarn, pull through, making sure to weave in the loose yarn, and then the beret is complete. For the last hat in this collection, we have the balaclava. I know it's getting warm outside, but I still wanted to include this hat because of how cool and open to interpretation it is. You can literally make anything with a balaclava and you can make it in a numerous amount of ways. I'm a simple-minded person personally, so I like to use the magic circle method in creating a balaclava. I also enjoy how it looks the most when making a basic balaclava, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna do is create a magic circle. After the magic circle is made, double crochet 12 stitches into the middle and then pull the end yarn gently but tight enough so that it closes but doesn't break. Take your hook and insert it into the closest loop on the left and then make a slip stitch and chain 2. For the second row, you're going to make an increase of two double crochets into each loop. I've been saying loop this whole video, but I mean stitch. Hopefully this hasn't thrown anybody off. I'm sorry. Anyways, put two double crochets into each stitch, which is called an increase, and do that all the way until you reach the end of the row. Slip stitch into this little loop here, and then chain 2. Here's another little diagram of the increases that you'll need to do for the balaclava. 
After you finish your increases, you'll do four rows of double crochet or as many rows as you need until the balaclava reaches your eyebrows. Once it does, try on your hat and see if it fits on your head right. If it does, perfect. If not, you can unravel and take away some increases or normal rows until it's perfect for you. Make sure you know your measurements to save time. For this part of the project, you're going to need two stitch markers. What you're going to do is try on the hat again and use the stitch marker to mark where you want your eye hole to be open at. You want to make sure the chain you created earlier is at the back of your head so that the eye hole is in the front. The balaclava is usually closed until you reach around the eye area where there's a gap so you can, you know, not trip and fall due to not being able to see. So mark where you think you'll be most comfortable for your eyesight and everything and then take the hat off. After you marked the area where you want the eye hole to be on both sides of your face, crochet normally until you get to that first stitch marker. Once you reach the stitch marker, double crochet normally into that stitch and then chain as many chains as there are stitches between the first stitch marker and the second stitch marker. Once you chain that amount, chain an extra one or two stitches just to make sure the balaclava is more comfortable, but this is up to you honestly. At the second stitch marker, begin to double crochet again like normal and then continue until you reach the end of the row, slip stitching and chaining two. Continue to double crochet around, making sure you double crochet into the chain and continue on for as long as you want the balaclava. I personally began to run out of yarn around 11 rows and it was ending around the bottom of my chin area so that's how many rows I did. After 11 rows, you can choose how you want to end your balaclava. For me, I chose to make some decreases to get it to fit more snug around my neck personally and if you're going to be following this tutorial exactly, you're going to want to start decreasing for 4 rows. Here is a little diagram of how you'll be decreasing. You can choose to decrease more if you like or less if you don't want it as tight. It's entirely up to you. You, you're the one wearing it. To show you how to, after you finish your rows, you'll slip stitch the row, chain one, cut the yarn, pull through, weave in your ends, and your balaclava is complete. I hope you enjoyed the simple collection of hat tutorials. I have tons of new videos coming out soon. I'm sorry about taking forever to do so. So make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.